Hey everyone, in this video I'll show you what to do when your flush is not working. As you can see I'm pressing this and it's not working. First thing you need to make sure that your main switch for the toilet is on. Normally it's connected to your toilet or water pump switch. But this could vary on the type of motorhome or camper you have. So make sure that's on. Then you can go ahead and check the toilet as I showed you before. Okay. Also, make sure your cassette is in because sometimes some of the newer models they will not activate the flush unless the cassette is in because there's a safety switch in there. But as you can see here, no matter what I try, close it, open it, it's not working. So first things first, we'll go outside and check the fuse. In order to get to the fuse, you have to pull out the cassette. Make sure it's locked at the top. Oh, there's the cassette one eject. Now the fuse is located right there. In that panel there. It's just there. Also, don't forget to make sure that you have water in the flush as well. Just top it up. For testing purposes, you can use water. So as you can see it looks fine, nothing's broken, so we'll just test it out with the multimeter. Just check it for continuity. So the fuse is fine, there's no problem with the fuse. Once you know your fuse is fine, you can go ahead and check if there's power coming here. So normally on these 402 models and also the 400 series, you can just get the, the loom is just located here. Just pull it up. Be, care be careful, be gentle when pulling it up. You don't want to rip the wire out. like that just pull out the wiring and now with using the same multimeter go to twenty volts and just check for power there so as you can see there's no power so we'll go ahead and put this fuse back in. Now with the fuse back in, we should have power there. There you can see it's 14 volts. 14 volts because there's a solar panel installed on this camper. 
if you don't have a solar panel or if it's not plugged in it'll probably be around 12 volts but as long as you see some voltage there you know it's fine anything above 12 is fine so go ahead and put that back in slot that back in and slot that panel back in When that's done, just slot that down, kiss it back in because all our work is now inside the camper. Okay, so most of the time with these toilets, what happens is the actual pumps play up. Because what happens is when you just leave water and you leave these campers just sitting for some time, the water gets mold in it and it basically goes and clogs up the pump. Or if people put the wrong type of flush liquid into the um, toilet, flush system that also damages the pump so in order to access the pump we have to open this area here start by pulling this out it just pulls out like so it's the handle for the toilet then you want to gently pry this up that pulls up like so and you want to access this part here. This is your control board for your level indicator and your flush. Your pump is situated just underneath here. That pulls up like so. Also another thing is, um, I didn't mention, we'll go back outside and just show you. I forgot to mention this, if you're opening the area up, make sure you drain out your flush like so. That just clips into there and you just drain that out. Drain out all your water. When your water is drained, you can follow this wiring here and you'll get access to the pump you'll have to stick your hand in there and pull out the pump in order to replace it And there's the pump. So when it comes time to replacing the pump, all you have to do is, on this part here, you just have to cut the wire here. And the replacement pump normally comes with a set of crimp terminals. You just crimp on the new pump. As you saw there, I tried moving the impeller with a screwdriver, but it's completely seized. That's the common problem with these pumps. They seize up fully. So we'll go ahead and replace this. You can get a genuine uh, replacement pump, or you can get an aftermarket one. I'll leave some links in the description, and you can make up your mind on which you can make up your mind on which route you want to take.
make sure your switch is off make sure the circuit is not live before you cut this and this you will short out your system so make sure the power is turned off then you can go ahead and just cut the cut the wire like so and then you can remove your pump so see all that mold there that's what I was talking about all of that there all of that basically comes from not putting the right chemicals in your flush or for leaving your campus idle for too long so what I normally do is I clean up everything in there then I get a hose and I flush everything out I do several flushes just keep flushing it give everything a good clean just use water and just a brush or a sponge or something and just give everything a good solid clean then you then install the new pump because chances are if you do not clean all of that and you put the new pump in it's not going to last very long so just with your sponge just get in there give it a clean before you install any new pump it's easy enough to do it now I just like to tuck that at the side So as I was saying earlier, this impeller here is completely seized. A lot of gunk builds up in the whole system here and it basically locks in. Something I didn't mention earlier is when these pumps seize like this, and if you keep pressing the flush button, what happens is you either, in the best case scenario, the fuse will blow, so it'll protect all your wiring. In the worst case scenario, if someone's put the wrong fuse in there, you'll burn out your wiring and you'll have to replace everything. So always, if it's not working, check that fuse. If the fuse is fine and you got power like I showed you earlier, go straight to this pump and investigate and check it. This is another type of pump. It also has similar problems. Um, this one was working intermittently. So that's what it looks like on the inside. We cut this up so you can have a good look, visual on what it looks like. It's just your impeller and it pumps the water through there at the top. So we'll be installing this pump today. I'm just trying a different brand. Exactly the same as those. This is just a part number if you're interested. So it comes with this sort of terminal. You just splice into it and we'll install this one into the existing loop. So I like to solder these in. That's just my personal preference as I've always done. You can use crimp terminals or heat shrink tubes with um, solder, whatever works with your application. Take a rough measurement on the existing loom of the pump where you cut it and just cut it a bit further up. So say about here, cut it there and then we'll go ahead and skin it.
So brown is positive, blue is negative. But always double check. You can use your multimeter and just double check. Make sure it is the right way around because it depends on who's wired it in. So once you've done that and you skin that wire, make sure you don't forget to slot this through the grommet and slot it up here before you solder anything. If you solder this outside, then you'll have to recut it and put everything back together again. Once that's soldered, you can go ahead and slot your heat shrink on and completely insulate it. Again, like I said earlier, make sure that your power is off before you do any of this. And if you don't have access to turning this off, remove that fuse I showed you earlier. So then you know 100% there will be no power. There will be no power here until you press the switch, but as a precaution, I do recommend isolating the power first. I use the lighter because you don't want excessive heat coming anywhere near the, the PCB, the plastic of the toilet or the wiring loom. I normally use a heat gun but given that we're in a confined space this is a little bit safer because you can control the flame in order to heat the heat shrink but like I said earlier you might be using just the normal crimp terminals so in that case you won't need any of this so when you're finished wiring in your new pump go ahead and slot it back in put the flush pipe back in this is the pipe that's connected to your toilet and then you resubmerse your pump back in the slot so this slot here where the pump is located it's hard to show you but it's basically in this vicinity here so that's where you'll be putting this pump it's a bit difficult but you'll get there in the end Once you have slotted the pump in its vicinity here, make sure the impeller is facing down. Don't install the pump like this or like this. It has to be down with the impeller down at the bottom. So when that's done, go ahead and put this in. Make sure your o-ring is still here. Slot that in well. As I showed you earlier, this just clips in. And now you can take your handle and just clip it up. Test and make sure everything works. Now you see it doesn't work. Now we'll go and turn that switch on. Now with the switch on. You can hear the pump works well. Now we'll go outside and fill up the flush tank with clean water. Test it out. When you're happy with that it's working, you can go ahead and drain that out again and then we'll fill it up again with the proper liquid. So we'll go ahead and put this pipe back in there. It goes in like so. Pull this out. This is where you fill it in. So this is where you fill up your tank. If you see any dirt or sediment in there, make sure you drain it out. All you do is tilt this. So that's how you do it on this particular model. Your model might be different, you'll have to check that. Now we'll go ahead and fill this. 
up with fresh water. So this is your level indicator. Yeah, you'll see it. You'll see it working now. Now that we're filling it up. Once this is full, we'll go back inside and test the pump out. And we're back inside. Open the toilet. And as you can see, it works perfectly. As a general rule of thumb in New Zealand, we don't normally don't bother draining out the tank, the flush tank or any of our water tanks because it doesn't get cold enough, at least here in the North Island. But I believe in Europe, it's quite a common thing. So for anyone else who's not going to be using the camper for a few months, go outside and drain the tank like I showed you. Drain that tank and also empty your water tanks, so on and so forth. This will save you um, the hassle of having to replace this pump with the buildup of uh, mold or something of that sort. When you're all done, don't forget to put off your switch. And you're good to go on your next trip. Hope this was, hope this video was of some help to you. If it was, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, everyone. See ya.